Welcome to Activations with JJ, where we explore this amazing time of shift, ascension, and spiritual awakening with open minds and expanded hearts. Thanks for joining me on this incredible journey. Happy New Year! Welcome to the very first full episode for 2021 of Activations with JJ. I'm actually coming up on my year anniversary of starting the podcast, and that is so exciting. I started it in, I think, March of last year, so we're getting so close, and it's so fun. I have to tell you, I'm even more excited than I normally am to have you join us for this episode because I say us because I have a guest. Yay! This is the very first guest I've actually ever had on the podcast, And to be completely honest with you, one of the main reasons why is because I have a really busy, crazy life, like I'm sure many of you do, and it's just been easier for me to do solo podcasting up until now. And so I've kind of got a routine and I am looking forward to having guests every once in a while. So I hope you enjoy it as well. My very first guest is a dear friend of mine. I've actually been a guest on her podcast And her name is Tiffany Feedy, and she is with Awakened Divinity. She is an intuitive channel and energy healer, and she comes to us on the road, which is kind of funny. She has a school bus that she converted into a little house. So you might hear a little bit of road noise here and there, but I think it's going to be a really awesome episode. We talk about our feelings for this upcoming year, and not only this upcoming year, but just like this upcoming age and what it's going to mean for us and how we are going to be our authentic selves in this age, what it means to be that, how to connect with that part of us even more. I hope you enjoy listening to this episode as much as I enjoyed recording it with Tiffany. Hey, Tiffany, thank you so much for being on the podcast. So glad to have you. I know you're on the go, but I'm glad you could squeeze us in. And I'm excited to talk with you about what you feel about this new year, this new energy coming through. And uh, what are like your first impressions just heading into, you know, we're barely just hitting the first part of January here. What are your impressions? Oh, gosh. Well, they're so... I don't know if it knows what it wants to do yet. There's so much um, change and shift in everyone. And and quite honestly, moment to moment, uh, the energy is different. The vibration is different. And it's, it's as if we're hopping and jumping timelines, you know, floating through this reality very rapidly. And every single, as always, every choice you make, uh, and, 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 and paying attention to our vibration matters, but it's almost very clear immediately right now, like instant manifestation of like, if you have a moment of thought or of, you know, just not starting it off, right. You can just see the shift, right? (laughs) I think it's very, it's so tender. It's so it's just, it's, it's, a, it's, it feels tender. You know, the day one, I woke up and I listened to Rumi, uh, you know, Brian Scott, Reality Revolution. We talk about him a lot. And so I woke up listening to his Rumi meditation and it was great. And then I did some mirror work dancing in the mirror and I was feeling good. And it felt like a summer morning or spring. It just felt, the vibe was awesome. But uh, there, the, it's very very sensitive as if like uh, it's a full moon every single day it's crazy like people are uh, just it's wacky right now and um so it's really important i think to be mindful extra mindful you know we it's just we just have to mind our vibration mind we really want to stay or we're not going to stay in the 5D energy, right? We're not going to always be there. We're going to teeter in and out of 5D and 3D. We're really in the process of letting go of some stuff so that we can be on that ascension side of things. But uh, it's going to be, we're going to feel it and we're going to notice and we're going to see things so we can quicker kind of remove them and pay attention. And so that's kind of what I'm, what I'm noticing myself. What about you? Right. 
Oh, I love that. I, when you were talking right before I even said the second part of, of your observation, I totally was thinking timelines. Like, I feel like they're just being laid out before us. If, if you look at the new earth as a place for creators, you know, like you're, it's a place to be a, a creator rather to be created upon. Like, you know, you're the, you're the actor, not the one to be acted upon. It, it, it then it is kind of one of these where we're like, well, what's coming? And that's not the question we should be asking. We should be asking, what are we creating? So I think we even have to change our questioning. Like when we're channeling, like on our podcast, we have to change the way we question. We have to change the way we interact. It's almost like we need to go to spirit and say, here's what we want to do. Give us some insights on how to do it. Not what should we do? We don't know. No more of that. It's yeah. all in, it's all within. And it's just like, all right, I, I want it to look like this and feel like this. And, and this is the energy that I want. And just, um, you know, point me in the, in the direction or I maybe gently show me the things that I need. You know, I have a friend who she pointed out something really cool, not what I need to let go of right in the new year. What, what do I need to, what, what can I pay attention to, to bring light to, to like, when you break a bone, you're not thinking of releasing anything. You're thinking of how do I heal it? Right. Mm -hmm. So rather than what do I need to let go of? It's like, no, how do I heal? What do I need to do to heal, etc. And I think pointing the energy at that is more powerful and is more, you know, it just changes the architecture of it. Like you said, like being a creator instead of being created upon. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. I think for so long, the spiritual community used uh, their connection. And, and this isn't like a criticism at, by any means. It's literally just the energy that, that, that was there. The connection to, to, it was kind of like preschool. <laughs> you know, we were like, teach us, you know, and we've been taught. We've been taught for years and years and years and years, right? Like the earthlings have been taught. So now it's time, like if you look, this sounds like a kind of funny thing, but like there's actually this taxonomy that they use in the field of education with, it's called Bloom's Taxonomy. And you pass through different stages in it. And I think it's like a universal thing because it's like the first one is just gaining the knowledge. And then as you gain the knowledge, then you analyze it, right? And then you synthesize it. And then you, I mean, in, in so few words, like if you look it up, it's different terminology, but then you create and you teach. And I'm like, well, wake up people. We're on, we're on the, those levels. We're like moving here. We've gotten the knowledge. We've gotten these other things. Like now we're at a time where we take and we mold it and shape it in our hands. And that's where we're at. And I have to add something kind of funny too, because you mentioned about like just the shifting and the timelines. And my word for this year uh, that I chose was about being constant. And the funny thing is I started doing this little journaling exercise before I go to bed where I'm actually just journaling. I'm like doodling light language, I guess you could say, like just drawing light language. And then after I do it, like I kind of ask it what uh, what word would go with this drawing because it doesn't mean it's just symbols. And so I've done it two nights, right? I've just started. So last night, the word was impermanency. It was so funny. It was like exactly what you just said. Like the energy, it's impermanency right now. Yes. Holding loosely. Like just, just, I, my big thing is just, I know change is going to keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. And I'm just holding, I'm not even holding on to anything, just whether it's deemed, you know, like positive or negative or, or what have you, just knowing that we're going to be in a constant shift, a state of impermanency. I like that. Yeah, that's, and the light language is funny. We, you talk about symbols, like it's basically sigils, right? And it's, but it's downloading and creating from your heart space, uh, a sigil and, and then activating that by asking what it is and, and just putting your energy toward it. And then anytime you think about that sigil or that light language, it so all of the things we just have different names for it but the craft of it um you know it all inter it's interwoven and oh, yeah. i think that's really uh you know a special the what i've noticed is is 
uh, the duality or the, or the needing to, like this side's witchcraft and this side's, you know, extraterrestrials and this side's whatever, spirituality. And, but it's all cut from the same cloth, you know, and it's all, you know, the same tapestry. It's just what, how we label it and how we, you know, what we resonate with, but it all has the same impact and the same meaning. And I am noticing a lot of, uh, I'm try. I'm really not paying attention or putting my energy towards some of the the languaging that I don't resonate with. I don't even want to say negative language. It's just languaging that I don't resonate with about the times to come, you know. And I just sort of just say no, no, thank you. <laughs> Absolutely, no, I totally agree. And the funny thing about it, the impermanency part plays into that because I was just. I, you know, when we're, when we're talking or channeling, I often see things cause I'm super visual. So spirit will give me like just visuals with it. It's like, there's a chalkboard in my mind and it's like, okay, so this is what, so I just see, um, you know, in the past, the duality, the, the light and the dark and the division and the idea that there was a good and an evil or a right and a wrong, all of those things. And I just see that like, you know, as a black and white, uh, light, you know, with a line drawn straight down the middle, that's very, very defined. And I now see like why they're telling us impermanence because it's almost like they're taking this sort of uh, fluid thing that's that, you know, how oil and water are separate, right? And, and it's almost like they're taking it and they're just shaking it. And they're showing us that like that is not how it's everything's one. You guys are just like you've created this world where it's, it's separate, right? But it's, it's precariously separate. Like all you have to do is shake it up. So they're shaking us up. Like that's this, this, what kind of just comes to me right now is the idea of just being shaken up. And that doesn't have to be negative, right? Like you're, it doesn't have to mean like violence or horrible things are going to happen. It just means our like frameworks are going to be shook up our government, you know, everything. And, and it couldn't, ju- it can just be, it can just be things out of the blue. It doesn't have to be, come from violence or force. It can just be like one of those like, sort of serendipitous things or or like uh, synchronicities or things that just just almost fall out of the sky things that you're like what where did that come from those are the things I feel like are coming especially in the next few years because I don't even like talking about this next year I just don't feel like that's right I feel like we need to talk about the next decade because so many have talked about like to 2030 like just this kind of time frame so anyway that's just kind of my impression on what you were saying about as we expand on that that concept of impermanence right and then your concept of like passing judgment and using certain terminology and deciding not to you're like no I'm going to shake it up I'm not going to use that terminology like I'm going to choose something different for myself so anyway you know what I think also the collective is is waking up and and not I I love I'm educating myself on on reality transurfing and and the idea of you know pendulums and stuff and I used to be like I'm left I am all about you know this and then it's like I'm just I'm just adding energy to that to that separation of whatever left and right blah 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 and like both sides I notice so now um the 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 like quote left side or whatever is is doing things with, you know, segregation, like on Netflix, there's this all, you know, black TV shows and somebody posted something about how now they're still segregating. They're like forcing segregation. It doesn't matter left or right. If you're what political side you fall on, they're still trying to force the separation in some sort of way. And people are not allowing it anymore and not letting it go on long. They're like, Hey, pay attention to this because this is still happening and so it's like it's like it's fun to watch as a society so many individuals are just really aware and becoming self-aware like on a micro format and also in a macro sense and really not letting these structures rule us no matter you know, what kind of scale it is. And I think that that's really cool to watch. And I've said this a lot. I love the, you know, the Gen Z kids or, or you know, the 20 somethings and teenagers now, they're not 
they're not going to be messed with. They're so, I just, I'm so amazed by a lot of them, but I think uh, there's, there's something to be said by, again, if you hold fast to an idea, like this is what I believe, this is what I believe, this is what I believe. I I'm just saying like, hold loosely to stuff and just kind of flow, just be really getting to who am I not saying, you know, I am have to be fully this one thing. And I identify with this because if that's not who you are. Then you're not really allowing yourself to get to know or embody your authentic self. You're just identifying with some, you know, structure. Wow. Wow. Yeah. And you know what? That's so funny because it just came to me not very long ago too. Like a lot of people are talking about how organized religion is on its way out because as we evolve con- our consciousness evolves, we start, we begin to see, you know, outside of the structures, like you were saying. So for so long, people felt like I, their, their identity was wrapped up in their specific religious beliefs. But I, and when I say religion, that can mean political, right? That can mean, you know, a lot of different things. It doesn't have to be just religion, but it just made me realize as you were saying that one thing that uh, I want to teach my kids, and I don't know how many of our listeners have children. I have adult children, you know, to help them understand that their identity doesn't come from a belief system because if that belief system crumbles, they're left with nothing. Like if all of a sudden something happens and they don't, and something comes down and it's like, what? You you still hold, you still who you are. It, it's not that that defines you. And so I think that's why it's important to have them shift their focus from anchoring their identity in an outside belief system. And then, but so many of them, you know, you know, like you mentioned, they're really getting it. So many of them are starting to understand the importance of meditation and going within. And that is exactly what they need to do because it's just the shift from, looking outside for your identity to looking inside for your identity and what kinds of sort of like uh, day-to-day activities can you do that will reinforce that going within and and uh, it'll actually also when they go within it'll change what you were mentioning it'll change their reaction to things that are going on you know politically religiously whatever it is yes well like for me get outside when I just get outside and I listen to music and I don't listen to political stuff and any of that, like news, none of it. I just, I'm in, I'm staying with my parents right now. And um, so I'm having to be more mindful of, you know, correcting energy, I guess. But, uh, but when I'm on the bus traveling, I am just, we're in nature and I'm, I'm really mindful about what I put in, whether it's, you know, music, podcast, people, things like that, audiobooks, and just making the choice of, of how I want to, uh, how I want to be. And I definitely think like getting out, get outside, get outside, get outside yeah. is the major, and it always has been. It always has been that that's it's like, true. that's, it's, it's there for us. It's healing for us. It's it. And again, being that we are all one. And then when we shake it up, it, the walking in the forest is therapy for a reason, because when you open yourself to that connection and so many people are, are allowing themselves to feel it now, you know, I was in Sedona uh, like a couple months ago and there's a reason there's a, people are drawn there. And, and, um, and allowing themselves to feel that, but you don't have to go there. You know, the tree in your backyard can have that. We know that we've had, we've had experiences in in backyards <laughs> in, in central right. Texas. 100%. And it doesn't, it's just all around. And so opening to see things a little bit differently is super important. But again, like you said, not looking outside, not, not looking outside ourselves is um for answers because then it's like then it would you change your mind and you're like hold fast to this whole thing well so and so said this and i believe this because that person said it and then but then you hear somebody else say something else so it's like okay i educate myself i like to again you know 
read this literature and, and open my mind, but I don't like to stand in, in super connection to a certain ideal as who I am and identify as that because I know how, you know, that can shift. And it's funny, I've always been that way. I've never been, I've had many jobs. I've had many, like, I guess, avatars, you know, as Jessa Reed says, but I've had many avatars. I shift, I change. I, I like different things. I always flow with it. I've never been shy about that. I've always been you know, maybe other people have had thoughts. So leaning into the authentic authenticity of who we are, I am an individual who thrives on change. I actually like change. I like to shift. I like to learn new things. And, and so I used to fight that and think, um, well, I didn't necessarily fight it, but I, all around me, I'm listening to people think there's yeah, something wrong you with compare. It. Yeah. Like you don't fit in the box and it's like, uh, what, what's, what's up? Like, right. It's so funny that you say that because like, I think that's why we're friends, right? Because we were the same. Like my whole life we've moved. I've had different jobs. And the funny thing about it is, as you're saying that, it's just reminding me of something I was listening to. Oh, it has been last year. And I think it was Cryon. And he was saying, you guys have got to learn how to be okay with change. I mean, it was kind of like, well, if you could have one piece of advice for, you know, humans right now on planet Earth, what would it be? And he'd be like, this coming time period, you have to be okay with change. You got to be okay with shifting. You got to be okay with it. And the word, just as I was thinking of that word, I, I brought up impermanence. A lot of us have a fear of it. And I, if you look at evolution, right? Like if you look at the evolution of, of the human being, you can know that 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 totally makes sense because it comes from that fight or flight. And it's like they were looking for that comfort. You know, it's kind of wired into our brain. We're looking for that stability, that comfort and it, and that safety. And everything we do is to protect that stability and that comfort. Right. And that's kind of a hard wiring. Well, our DNA is changing and it's going to be fluid. It's going to be much more based on a fluid model, I believe. And I think that's why the impermanent. So when we see something is static, that's kind of the old way, if you could look at it that way, or that's how that old energy was. And I believe that coming into this new time, this new energy, this new space, it's very fluid. And I believe that it's important to explore lots of different energies to find, you know, I talked about this on my uh, energy update last week, but to find your kind of your soul group, right? Right. That encourages you to flow and that encourages your flow. And you know, it's also funny because for some people, that's actually not the reality that they live in. If I look at my parents, they, uh, you know, they, that's not, they're not on this planet for that kind of job or that kind of, they were on this planet to, you know, affect me, you know, essentially, and they have their own, their own path. And, and maybe their path could have gone that way, but that's not the choice they made. And so the choice they made is a different reality, essentially. And so it doesn't, it's not the same for them. But I think anyone listening to this podcast, that's how it's going to go. Like the whole tighter you hold to something, the, the more clearly and definitely it's going to go. And to just like, again, be okay and just be in the state of flow and not even trying to force or choose. Even with manifestation, it's like kind of just flowing with what's to come and not, and not trying to almost like creating, but also knowing that in that creation, we're really creating by our vibration and our frequency and, and the energy that we want, not by the specifics, right? It's like, I just want to get my frequency higher, be in this state of love, heal. What can I heal? How can I focus on finding out my authenticity and, and what I internally am really interested in and what lights me up and, and continuing to lean into that and, and in doing that, elevating my frequency and my vibration and then knowing whatever changes come, up and down, whatever, they're going to be rapid because my frequency is higher. So I'm just going to be riding that wave really quickly without trying too hard, without too much effort. 
but that's my that's what the that's the that's the uh reality you know you and i live in the reality that there's a whole other energy of people on this planet that that's just not theirs and so we being a knowing that we're going to be surrounded by different individuals and perhaps the that'll sort of change i don't know how that's going to look i don't know how you think that's going to look going forward with whatever this shift that's continuing to happen but um i don't think that there's going to be some big thing where everybody disappears and we're completely split i don't think it's gonna necessarily be that obvious you know no i don't think anything well at least what resonates with me nothing makes it seem uh extreme so it's like things begin to fade. And when they say things begin to fade, it's like, could that be over a period of 100 years, right? You know, it's like, yeah, it could definitely be a extended fading of things. Like things will fade out of your life. But guess what? That already happens if you just think about it. I feel like everything is going to be gradual. So it, you don't have to go looking for impulsive extreme actions. That's something actually I have learned. I thought everything on your spiritual journey had to be impulsive and extreme. I thought that if we were going to listen to spirit and, and do what we needed to, it was like, it has to be extreme. It has to be sudden. It has to be like these crazy, wild, uh, you know, things. And now I realize, no, it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be. It can be just like a fluid flexibility to move when you need to adjust but it doesn't have to be so much fire element. I guess if I were to say it in an element, you know. Oh, yeah, the elements. I'm so glad that you could come on with me today and take this little bit of time. And you can tell us if you'd like to uh, take a second. Let us know how our listeners can connect with you. Awesome. So I, um, I'm actually revamping my website. So the best way to connect with me is through probably Instagram. I'm, I'm on there the most often. I have 500 uh, Instagram accounts. So one is at Tiffany Feedy, F-E-D-E, Divinity. Or you could email me at tiffanyfeedy.divinity at gmail.com. And uh, yeah, I'm just traveling on the bus, getting out there, getting out in nature like we talked about, just being being free and connecting and and checking out the the, the big old wild west <laughs> sweet well if you guys needed a little taste of some free wild and nature loving energy you just got it because you listened to this podcast so thanks again for being on we hope to have you on again and we'll see you later thank you it was a pleasure And there you have it, my very first episode with a guest. Yay! I hope you enjoyed it. It was so fun to be able to talk to Tiffany about these things. And, you know, it's just really awesome to associate with people who are like-minded. I talk about gathering with your soul group or your soul family, and I definitely feel like we are in the same soul group or soul family. We found each other in a really random way. And we've been able to connect and it's been awesome to have that to support. So I encourage you to do the same thing, like look for ways that you can connect with people that you can talk to this stuff about, because let's be honest, not everybody will understand you if you talk about this kind of stuff. But it is kind of like a relief when you get to talk to somebody who sees things similar to the way you do and and wants and desires the things that you desire. So again, thank you so much for listening. Please go and follow the podcast if you haven't already subscribed to it and give it a rating. That always helps a ton. And then you can look me up on Instagram at Activations with JJ. I also have a YouTube channel and on my YouTube channel, you will find content that I don't actually have here on the podcast. So please hop on there, like and subscribe uh, to get the notification so that, that when I publish something new it'll come up I plan on doing some different light language meditations on there here coming up in the future and it's just going to be a really awesome channel and it's called activations with JJ so it should be pretty easy to follow and to find thank you so much again and as always 
the light in me honors the light in you. Namaste.